Pastor, I, I'm busy right now. I've got to take care of things. I, I got a, I got a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, and those things are more important than people that are dying and going to hell. The difference between somebody who is going to heaven and someone who is going to hell is a choice of belief or unbelief. That every person is born with the knowledge of God in their hearts, and that the difference between people who are saved and the people who are lost is not whether or not they have access to God or whether or not God has chosen them for heaven or hell. It's a difference between what they do with Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches in Romans chapter 1 that everyone has a knowledge of God and even a knowledge of Christ. That is when it talks about the Godhead. And that's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And just by creation itself, and by the way that God created us in our hearts, we know there's a God. And that's simply explained, uh, and, and it's evident in the fact that every child knows there's a God. You take a little child, and you explain to him who the God of the Bible is, and he recognizes him. He says, oh, okay, that's where I came from, and that's who made the world. And that's the answer to all the questions that children have. Children think about theological things. I remember as a two- and three-year-old, and yes, I can remember that far back, I remember trying to think of my origin, and realizing that there had to have been a time when I began, and I didn't make myself. And uh, when my parents told me who God was, I didn't have any trouble with that concept. I knew that God made the world. And we know that in our hearts. Everyone that doesn't believe that there's a God has come to a place or a time in their life when they've chosen to turn with a heart's attitude of unbelief toward God. And that's true. You ask somebody that says, I don't believe there's a God. You ask them, when did you stop believing there was a God? And they'll first usually say, well, I, you know what, um, I never really believed. I just believed what people told me when I was a kid. That's not an honest answer. But then they'll tell you, this is when I stopped believing. This is when I found out the truth, if you will, or whatever else. And there's a time when people decide either to believe in Christ or to reject Christ. And friend, I want to say the difference between somebody that goes to heaven and a person who goes to hell is what you do with Jesus. My friend, religion won't get you to heaven. Never has and never will. Listen, being a Baptist, being baptized... Being whatever it is that you think you are, I'm telling you that the Bible teaches very plainly that a person who goes to heaven has had a time in their life when they've trusted Christ as their Savior. They've trusted in the work of Christ on the cross when He died for their sin, was buried and rose again, and they believe in God and they're alive with Christ. Is God unrighteous or are people unrighteous? And the answer is God is not unrighteous. God forbid... Here we find illustrations of one that believed and one that didn't. And God condemned the unbeliever as He is just to do so because He's the judge of all men. By the way, study Pharaoh before you go making accusations against God. Who hardened his heart before God hardened the heart of Pharaoh? Pharaoh did. Pharaoh did. And God said, Pharaoh, you want to play that game? I'll make it real hard on you. And I'll go ahead and let you have a hard heart and here's what I can do with that. And God's righteous, my friend. He was righteous to harden the heart of Pharaoh and to judge him. But he didn't pick him to go to hell. He knew Pharaoh was going to go to hell. See, one of our problems as believers is we think that everything about God has to be something we can understand. Can I say to you that God made your mind? He created you with your intellect and its limitations. If you don't understand something, it's because you're not as smart as God. And there are things that God doesn't need you to understand. Friend, if you understood how God created the world, couldn't you do the same? Wouldn't you be God? You're not. And Christians think they've got to be like God. Friend, it is a wonderful thing to be privileged with spiritual truth, isn't it? Mm. To be able to understand things that before Christ you could not. Mm. But get it in your mind that you're not God and you don't get to be His judge. You say, Pastor, I don't think it's fair that God sends people to hell. Who are you? You've made yourself God's judge. Will He bow His knee to you someday? Will He say, I never thought of that, it never occurred to me that those individuals that hated me should be allowed into my perfect heaven? Those individuals that disdained and rejected the blood of my precious Son who died on the cross for them should be pardoned because they're more intelligent than me and their plan was better than me? Take some time and try to figure up a redemption plan if you would. I spent a lot of time in my life. I try not to deal a lot with hypothetical because we have the answers to the things we need to know. But if you want to deal with hypothetical, come up with a redemption plan that doesn't involve Christ. 
Just say, you know what? Here's a, here's something I could submit to God that would make it okay for my sin, my hatred toward Him, to be forgiven. That would make it okay my rebellion and my rejection of Him, and make it so that it would be right for Him to forgive me. And you'll be grateful for the person of Christ and the work of the cross because you'll never come up with a plan. One thing that I can come up with that would justify my sin against God is to go to hell. Only thing that would be fair would be me to say, God, well, God, here's the deal. I'll burn in hell for eternity and be forever separated from you. And that's fair. And God would say, that's a deal. That's fair. The problem is I wouldn't survive that deal. I and mean, we're talking about a situation where you'd survive. And my friend, that's Jesus. Jesus Christ became sin. He became a man. That was a terrible disgrace for God Almighty. He surrendered His ability as God the Son and lived with the abilities that any man can have and yet was without sin. He was the righteousness of God in the flesh. And then He became sin in the flesh. And He died for sin. And don't be so arrogant as to think it wasn't your sin He died for. You're wicked and so am I. Let's be honest about it. God didn't save any good people. And the Apostle Paul is a better Christian than probably any of us here today because I haven't met somebody that's honest about it and says I'd go to hell if people could be saved. But my question to you, Christian, in conclusion this morning is this. What would be too great a cost for you to win the lost? What would cost too much for you to be willing to win the lost? You know what the answer to that question is? Whatever it is that's keeping you from sharing the gospel with the lost right now. And that's what you're not willing to be accursed from. Pastor, I, I'm busy right now. I've got to take care of things. I, I, got a, I got a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, and those things are more important than people that are dying and going to hell. I'd just like to ask you this morning in conclusion, I think this applies to all of us, to ask yourself a question. And the question is how important are the lost to God and how important ought they be to you and I? Christian, why do people go to hell? Because they trust their own righteousness. Trust their own righteousness.